Hey there, Russ here. Welcome back to the shop. Today, we're going to talk about wood hinges again. So, does anybody remember this? Huh? Remember this hinge? You know what I called it? This is a stick hinge. A stick hinge is made out of one long piece of wood. I cut into three pieces, drilled a hole through it so that I could get this to work, and this all, and then I rounded off the bottom so that it works like a hinge. And I installed this, made two examples of it. This was one of them, if you remember. This was three pieces just like this with a pin through it, a nail. And I turned it into a nice little wood hinge. The other one I did was this one, and this is an example of an inlay, an inset door. And if you look at it this way, this is an overlay door with the hinge on the side of the cabinet instead of on the front. So you can take that hinge and do that. Now I only did one hinge on each of those, each of those obviously. So let me show you how you can take this same simple stick hinge methodology and turn it into an actual door on a, a hinge and this thing just works perfectly as you can see. Not only that, I made this one so that you can actually take it off and do something with it if you have to take the door off for some reason and put it back on just as easy. And it works perfect. Um, instead of three pieces like this has with the net with the pin, this has only two pieces with the pin. So I still use the finishing nail for the pin. As you can see here on the base part of the hinge, this is the part that's attached to the base to the frame of the door with the pin in here. And then this piece is put on to line up so that when you drop it down under it works. Now if I wanted to turn this into a hinge that looked more like this with a, with it on both sides, on this particular one it doesn't really matter. I could take another piece of wood, the same as the ones that are on there, put an oversized hole on it on the end like that so that it will fit on that hole and glue it in place there and now it looks like a three-piece hinge again on this door. So, but you don't need that on there if you don't want to. That's a matter of aesthetics. You can do it with a three-piece hinge or you can do it just a two-piece. Uh, that is up to you. The trick to making the hinge like this is to get um, the hole drilled perfect and to get it everything to, uh, to line up on the between the door and the door frame when you put this together. I only put, I use CA glue to put these pieces in place and actually it looks like that's all I really need. But at this point, now that they're all in there and everything is working good, I will come back and drill this out with a small hole and put bamboo skewers in there with wood glue. And that'll help strengthen these up. So I'll put a couple of those in each of these pieces so that uh, then I don't have to worry about depending on just the crazy glue uh, to hold them in place. And that'll be more than strong enough for this door. Since I probably won't get the urge to hang on it and swing, I think this door will be fine just the way it is. Even without the reinforcement of the bamboo skewers, I'm sure this door will never fail. So, And at this point, also, I can now take this apart, the door off, and I can shape my hinges real easily here and on the frame so that I get a much better looking hinge when I'm done. So, but I start off with it nice and square so that I can make sure that I get everything lined up and get the hole drilled straight. And now at this point, I also get the drill out to put the bamboo skewers in there. Uh, and then I shape it. So, that's the process. At this point, if you stick around, we're going to install this door where it belongs so you can see what I'm using it for. And I'll probably take it back off, give it a little bit of sanding, get rid of all the pencil lines that I've got on here, and put some um, boiled linseed oil on it to help make it look a little nicer. And I think it'll look really nice once I get this in place with everything completed. But I wanted to show you this hinge at this point so that you can relate to what exactly it is, how I made this hinge, so that you can do this easily too. Less than five minutes to make that hinge and put it in place. So. Uh, and all I did is I used two pieces of small wood like this to make the hinge and a finishing nail like that. 
So in order to make this work, what I did was I took the two pieces, and let's say this one is the, let's take a look here. This one is, this one is this piece, and this one is this piece on the door. And I take and I round it off the bottom of it, right here, so that it gets that clearance and not rub against the door frame as this thing swings. The other thing I did is that I made sure that the nail, when I put it in there, that the nail is higher than halfway on the board from, from top to bottom, from up to down. So, give me a second, she's looking for this. There you go, go lay down, get your toy, go on. Go lay down. Go on. So, um, so you want to stay up higher. That way, when you put this together, let me show you. This one here, I've got the hole drilled, but we'll drill another one to show you how to do it. I would put it in there, set it up on top, and tap it down in there. And now, this thing is, is now a hinge. And the, this, the tricky part of something like this is to get it so that the hinge clears as it moves. So if this is glued to the surface, this part is glued to the door, when you open the door, you can see how the pin holds it up away from anything so it never rubs anywhere. And so this thing has really easy clearance by moving that pin further away from your door surface. To drill this hole and to make it line up perfectly is actually very simple. These are both on the plane of this door and the surface of the door frame. This is all the surface that is the reference surface for your, your uh, hinge. So if I set this down on my tabletop, and this, let me take this apart. So if I want to put this together, this is the this is the um, piece that goes here, and this is the piece that goes on the door with the rounded off corner, and I set them both flat on the table on my workbench like this, so that they're in alignment at a 90 degrees, just like here. And then I take, and I'm going to take and lock this one down in place. Let me move this just a little bit. Like so. Then I take this one and line it up to this one. And now we clamp this one down Just like so, so I can drill this hole. The drill bit is the same exact size as the nail that I'm going to use for the pin. You'll need this drill bit and you'll need the drill bit. It's here somewhere. You'll need the other drill bit that is 1 64th of an inch larger than that bit. And I'll show you why in a moment. So now that you got this lined up here and you have it clamped down in place on my table, I have my drill bit here. There is a bubble gauge here so that I know that this is level when I'm drilling. And this table surface is also perfectly level. And by knowing that, I now have be able to put this in here and drill the hole. And all I have to do is line this up to that bubble. And when I know that that bubble is in the center, I know that as long as I drill, that hole will be perfectly straight all the way in and parallel to the table, which is what we want. So I take and I hold this piece here up against this piece with my hand, like so. Everything's being held down to the table. And I go in here and I drill the hole as deep as I want to make it. In this case, I make it this deep, which is about three-fourths of the width the length of my nail. Now that I had that hole drilled, I changed a bit out, take that piece away, 
I take the oversized drill bit now and I drill the door part. This piece here, I drill it to the larger size. And now I'm done. Now, turning it into a hinge it just takes a second. So now I have it that much. Now I can take this piece, take my finishing nail, put it through the door part of the hinge and into the frame part of the hinge, like so. Make sure that everything is lined up like it should be. Everything seems to be lined up perfectly. And I take and just drive it in a little ways. You don't want to drive it too far. You're liable to split your wood. Just enough to, to sink it in. Now, and now I can cut this off anywhere I want to the length I want so that I can take this on and off. To mount it, that's the next part. And that's pretty easy too. All I did there was I take my door and my frame and I set them on my table. Line everything, line my door up perfectly where I want it, bring it up against my door frame here, like so. And then I would take and clamp everything down in place. Then I take my hinge, put a little CA glue on here. I line this edge up. I line this edge up to the edge of inner edge of my door frame. You can put this anywhere as long as it's running parallel so that you know that your nail is running parallel. Line it up the way you want it with the, with the CA glue on there. Hold that piece in place. And now all you have to do is take this piece, put some glue on it, drop it down, hold it in place. And just that quick and easy, that hinge is installed. And once you do that to both hinges, you then have a working door. So putting it on is just as easy as drilling a hole. It's not that hard to do. I can now take this apart very easily and shape my hinges to get a little bit more attractive look of the hinge for what I have. You can rough shape it everything you want. I like to leave them as square as possible when I install them on the door so I have my lines to be able to line things up the way I want them lined up. Uh, Use your imagination. You can make this. Some of it you may want to pre-shape ahead of time. Sometimes you want to put it on and then shape it. That's up to you. You can do it however you want. And after you've done a few hinges, you'll figure out, depending on what type of hinge you're doing, as to whether or not you want to pre-shape them or shape them after they're put installed in place. But this door is ready for finishing, finished sanding, and ready to be installed on the door. That quick and simple. So now, let's take this door and let's go install it so you can see how it works in place where it's going to be. To install it, I just drilled two pocket holes here and here to attach it in place. So let's go put this on and see what we can do, how it works, okay? So let me take this. One more drink of coffee if you don't mind. Hmm. Okay. Now you're gonna have to stand up and out of the holder. Oh, come on. There you go. I'll carry the door. Follow me. Here we go. Let me go over here. Had a hard time setting that down. All right. So, right here is where we're putting the door on. So I take my door off the frame. I have two pocket hole screws here. Here and here. It lets install this. It's going to go right over my fuse panel here, my circuit breaker panel. So this will go here. I hope you can see this. And it goes in there just like that. And 
just that quick, we now have a working door over, over that. Now I'm probably gonna put a magnet on there, but there we have it now. There, now you can see it a little better. And I have a nice little cover over my fuse panel now, so it looks a lot better. So that's all there is to it. I uh, I didn't take long to make it. Like I said, the hinges and stuff and install, I always like easy. So, But there's another example of a quick, easy way to make hinges that will be useful around the shop and not only durable, but probably will look kind of nice too. So if you have any questions about this, uh, any comments, maybe examples of what you've done, something similar to this, let me know. Just leave it in the comments. I read them all. I enjoy reading them. If you make a set of hinges, send them to my email address to get uh, so I can enjoy them too. I appreciate it because up to now, I've had lots of people making my hinges. The first hinge, and they've been sending me the pictures, and it's just been wonderful to see all those. It's very cool. So, if you're going to make hinges, don't be afraid to do it, and don't be afraid to send me the pictures. Uh, I do appreciate it. So, like I said, any questions, just leave them down below, any comments. If you like this video, you learned something here, hit that like button. It lets me know I'm doing the right thing. Uh, most importantly, though, please come back again because I'm nowhere near done. Hey, thanks for stopping by and we'll see you guys again soon. Bye.